Hi guys, it's Alana from The Rustic Wife and I just came in from the garden. I picked my first bucket of pickling cucumbers and um, I like to make pickles out of them as soon as I pick them. It keeps them crisp. So I thought I would show you guys how I do this and I still have my hat on. I usually take it off inside but I have hat head from the, <laughs> from the garden and I really wasn't planning on doing this video. So um, I'm just going to take you along with me. I already have my brine done but I'm going to show you uh, what I put into that. And I use a recipe from Natasha's Kitchen and I use her brine recipe. I, I add a, a little bit of extra sugar than, than she adds, um, but I will link that recipe below in the description box so you can see the original one too. Um, so yeah, so I'll turn you around and show you what I've got here. So I've got my pickling cucumbers here that I just picked. I've washed them off, but I have them soaking in cold water. I like to keep them in cold water until I use them because that also helps to keep your pickles crisp. I have some dill that I just snipped off um, from the herb garden fresh. I've got some of the heads and I also have some of the fern, uh, the ferny stuff from it. And I also picked some grape leaves. Grape leaves contain tannins, which help keep your pickles crisp as well. So I'll be putting one leaf into each jar and I'll be using quart jars. Here today. I have some garlic. I like to add a couple of cloves into each quart jar. If they're small, I'll, I'll add three, but you don't need to add garlic. Um, I use some mustard seed and peppercorns, and if you want, you can add some uh, chili flakes. So for the brine, I use my well water. If you are on town water that's chlorinated, you might want to use bottled water. Um, but I, I use pickling salt, and there's no additives in it. There's no iodine, so that is what you want to use for your brine. If you use the iodized salt, you can get a cloudy brine, so you want to use the pickling salt, and you just find that in your... Uh, the spice aisle at the grocery store. Um, I use white vinegar and make sure it's at least 5% acid and you can see that right here. It says it right there. It contains 5% acetic acid by volume. So you want at least 5%. I already have my brine made up here. I have eight cups of well water. I have six cups of white vinegar, a third of a cup of pickling salt, and I added a third of a cup of granulated sugar plus a tablespoon and a half I added. So you can see over my shoulder here I've got my canning pot ready to go, the water's hot in there, um, and my jars. I've got uh, seven quart jars ready to go, I think that's how many I'll need, and I've already washed them in hot soapy water and I sterilize mine in the oven at 225 degrees for about a half an hour. So they're in the oven ready to go and I also have my lids washed and ready to go too. So a few so. tips to keep your um, cucumbers crisp mm -hmm. and make your pickles crunchy is you mm -hmm. want to make your pickles very soon after you've either picked or purchased your, your cucumbers. So in my case, I just pick these and put them in cold water. Mm -hmm. If you can't process them right away, leave them in ice water and you can put them in your fridge. If, you're, if they're gonna be there for a couple of days, then make sure you change the ice water but no more than two days, you, you're not gonna have them. They won't be very crisp. Also, you wanna keep them small, fairly small, and when you're making dill pickles. These ones are a nice size. The smaller they are, the crunchier your pickle will be. Now this one here, I'm gonna probably cut that in four, and those spears won't be as crunchy as, say, this one here. So that's why I like to get the picklers and keep them fairly small because it's a, a nice crunchy pickle. And the other thing too is on the ends here, you can see the blossom end and where the stem was. You want to slice off a small part of those ends. Those ends contain an enzyme which can make your pickles um, softer too. And then like I said before, you can add a grape leaf to each jar because these grape leaves contain tannins which help keep your pickles crunchy too. So there's a few tips for crunchy pickles. So just that much. I'm just going to pack these jars. I just took these out of the oven. They were sterilizing and I put in a teaspoon of black peppercorns in each quart. Now this brine recipe makes enough for about six or seven quarts. And I think I've got enough pickles or cucumbers for about seven quarts. I never actually know how many I'm going to get out of the, the bunch that I pick. So if I need to make more brine, I will. So there's a teaspoon of mustard seed as well. You can add whatever you want in here. Um, Natasha 
for her recipe, she uses bay leaves and horseradish. That would be nice too. But I just use black peppercorns and mustard seed, garlic, dill, and my grape leaves. And like I said, you can also add some hot pepper flakes if you want. I'm going to put two fairly large ones in each quart. If they're not very big, I put three in. I'll put my grape leaf in each one. And then some dill heads at the bottom. I'm going to put more dill heads on the top too, but right now I'm going to put some on the bottom. And it doesn't matter, you can use however much dill you want for a stronger dill flavor. I do like a strong dill flavor, so I add a few, a couple of heads and some of the ferns as well. Okay, then I'm going to pack the cucumbers in here. I, I always usually tilt the jar. It's easier to kind of keep them in place. And you can kind of pack them like a, like a puzzle, really. You want them packed in here fairly tight because the cucumbers will actually shrink once they're processed. So there's one. So I only had enough cucumbers for six quarts and I just distributed the rest of the dill and the garlic and the spices into these last jars. I just didn't want to waste it. So now I'm going to put the brine in and process it in the canner. Okay, so I'm going to fill my pickles with the brine now. And I use one of these funnels, very, very handy to use. You don't spill stuff everywhere and just a ladle. So you want to fill it right up to within a half inch headspace. Headspace is quite important. You want to leave the right, correct amount of headspace. So check your recipe. If you leave too much, um, the fruit or vegetables will discolor and also it may not seal properly because there's too much air and the processing time isn't long enough to drive some of that air out of the jar or all of the air out of the jar. If you don't leave enough, your brine will bubble up and possibly cause a hindered seal. So you want to use a non-metallic tool to put down the side of your jar with your vegetables and you want to try to release any of the air that might be trapped. You'll see here, see some bubbles going up there? That's some trapped air. You want to get that out because if you don't, if you put your brine up to the required headspace, if the air is still trapped in there, the headspace will readjust itself and it will be less than what the recipe calls for. So now that you've done that and released all the air, you want to put more brine in there and fill it up to within a half inch headspace or whatever your recipe requires. This pickle recipe, most pickles will be half inch headspace. You also want to use a non-metallic tool, something thin. I just use a skewer here. You can use a chopstick, but if you use metal, there's a chance it could clink against the glass or scratch it and it could cause breakage in your canner. So what you want to do is after you've released the air bubbles, you want to readjust the headspace and bring it up to your half inch headspace. And take a clean cloth. You want to wipe off the rim. Any liquid drops on the rim here could also hinder your seal. And then you want to take the inner lid and the ring. You want to do it finger tight, not too, too tight, but you want to do it finger tight and put this into your hot canner here. The water is just going to boil now and I'm going to put the lid on it. Oh, you also want to have the water at least an inch above the tops of the lids and you want to put the lid on it. And as soon as that comes to a full rolling boil, set your timer for 15 minutes. The thing that I'd like to mention is before you do any canning with your jars, you should, even if they're brand new, you should always check the bottom or the sides to see if there are any cracks um, or run your finger along the top here to check for any chips because if there's a crack or a chip, 
if there's a crack, your jar could break in the canner. If there's a chip, that will hinder the seal for your um, finished product. But every time I've had a jar break, it's always just the bottom. The bottom just breaks on it and it doesn't shatter. It just cracks and it's one solid piece that comes off. And it's always the new Bernardin jars for some reason. Never my old ones, just the new ones. So they must make them must, much cheaper than they used to. So that's a little tip there so This for is you. at a full rolling boil right now and I want to set the timer to 15 minutes. There we go. And once that 15 minutes is up, I'll take the lid off and let it settle just for a few minutes so I don't burn myself and then take the jars out. The timer went off for the 15 minute processing time. Since I'm doing quarts, it's 15 minutes, but if you were doing pints, it's only a 10 minute processing time for these dill pickles. So I've shut the oven or the stove top off and I'm just going to carefully remove the lid. I don't wanna have anything bubble up and splash on you. And then you wanna remove your jars from the canning pot. Now, when you take the jars from the canning pot out, you wanna have a, a tea towel down or something because you don't want a boiling hot jar sitting on a cold counter and that could cause breakage too. Here we go. So there's all the Pickles taken out of the canner, and like I said, they're on a tea towel so that the hot jar isn't touching the cold counter. And these tools, I just got this from our local home hardware store, and it's a jar lifter. It's really, really handy because you keep your hand well away from the water and you don't get a steam burn, so they're really handy. I think it was maybe five bucks or something like that, so it's a really good investment if you're going to do some canning. So there's the pickles. So that's it guys, it's really really easy. Um, may look like a lot of steps but actually it's not. It's just maybe it looks that way because I'm trying to do it on film but once you get going it's, it's super easy. And that recipe also follows the safety guidelines for canning so that one's a good one to use. So anyway there's my pickles done for the day and I'm heading out to go pick up my daughter from work and I will see you again next time. Thanks for joining me.